see wars that are being sustained by the use of children, and I cannot accept as a professional soldier, let alone as a father, that such a scenario can continue and not be abated by concrete actions in the field. At this moment in history, we are divided by many ideologies, approaches, and presumptions. Our world has been dominated by greed and individualism. We have been taught to perceive issues in binary terms without critically reflecting on the circumstances and the context that underlie our present global challenges. Tonight, we are here to explore not only what makes children vulnerable to recruitment and use, but the rationale and the motivations that drive armed groups, forces, and gangs to use children. This means understanding the situation from all possible angles, from the child that is recruited and used as a soldier, to the person who is doing the recruiting, and to the communities that are impacted. Now more than ever, we must reflect on the world we want to live for generations to come. To think about the one thing that should unite us in our quest for sustainable peace, children. International law is also very clear that children who are recruited and used as soldiers are not to be held criminally responsible for their participation in armed conflict. This principle should apply regardless of where the child is recruited from or by which armed group, gang, or force, and no matter what your ethnicity, your race, your religion, your gender, or your political views one holds. In its 10th year at Dalhousie University, the newly relaunched Delair Institute for Children, Peace and Security calls upon the international community to support a children's rights upfront approach to achieving global peace and security. A children's rights upfront approach sees the world through the perspective of children's needs and priorities. It recognizes that Children's protection from violence and war must be our top priority in breaking cycles of generational violence. The use of children in conflict significantly increases the probability that the conflict will recur in the future. It also impacts the severity and length of conflict, making it a generational problem. We must consider early warning indicators and conditions that precede recruitment and use. And through this lens, we must focus on prevention. We live in a time when war is complex. Conflicts transcend national boundaries. Globalization impacts greed and grievance. And competition for short attention spans appears to be more important than taking the time to delve deep and question perceptions versus the realities. Youth is the leaders of tomorrow. So if we prepare today the leaders of tomorrow, it can save the nation of Somalia, the African nation, and the rest of the world. All children deserve a life that is free from prejudice. Hate is a land behavior, and violence is a taught treat. By prioritizing children's voices on the international peace and security agenda, and within a broader peace-building initiative, we increase the likelihood of children growing up in environments where they are active agents of positive change. And as we move forward, it is equally important for us all to remember that we have a collective role to play in protecting and uplifting society's most vulnerable children. Peter!